Hey everyone, in the world of cloud computing, here are a few tech news highlights from this week. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, a cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. We love filming our weekly news and shows, so remember to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to get the latest releases. And thanks for all your support on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and subscribing to the blogs on the website. Below there is also a link to the latest cloud computing blogs. All our shows are on iTunes as a podcast. Below there is also a link. Let's connect and reach out to me and my team. Below in the description box are the links for LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. I'm excited to announce that we are now in New York City and you can get in touch with us at New York at NelsonHilliard.com. Watch out for the new weekly cloud computing shows with David Linthicum, who is the world's number one cloud industry expert and internationally recognized thought leader. This week sees Atlassian move to ditch Stride and HipChat. Atlassian's Stride and HipChat team chat tools will be discontinued following a deal struck with rival Slack, a move that has serious implications for users who will now need to migrate to alternative platforms. The decision comes less than a year after Atlassian launched Stride as a successor to the popular HipChat tool. Atlassian had previously said it would continue to support HipChat Cloud for existing users while it encouraged them to move to Stride. The deal has raised concerns with customers of Atlassian regarding the Vendors Community Forum. One Atlassian community member said, This is pretty stupid. Why kill off products that many companies still use? There are some who don't want or can't use Slack. And another said, What the hell are on-premise customers supposed to do? We just implemented and invested in this app. We're building apps in-house for our own purposes. We have zero ability to use services of any type. You are offering zero alternatives. This week sees HSBC look to ramp up machine learning usage with Google Cloud. Global Bank HSBC has taken its first pilot machine learning projects with the Google Cloud Platform into production and is now looking to ramp up the portions of applications and data workloads onto the vendor's cloud infrastructure once Google provides more granular encryption key controls in August. HSBC is a much vaunted Google Cloud Platform customer and a key account in Google's attempts to court the financial services industry with global HSBC CIO Daryl West speaking on stage at the Google Cloud Next 17 event last year. HSBC is also using a Google BigQuery data warehouse for real-time anti-money laundering analytics and is running a machine learning model on top of time series data to identify potential cases faster and more accurately. HSBC is a customer of all of the big free cloud vendors, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure and of course Google Cloud Platform. This week sees IBM win 83 million US dollars from Groupon in an internet patent fight. A jury in Delaware said that Groupon used IBM's patented e-commerce technology without the authorization following a two-week trial. IBM invests nearly 6 billion US dollars annually in research and development, producing innovations for society. IBM spokesman Douglas Shelton said in a statement, we rely on our patents to protect our innovations. We are pleased by the jury's verdict. IBM had sought 167 million US dollars in damages, saying it had developed widely licensed technology crucial to the development of the internet. Two of the patents related to Prodigy, IBM's late 1980s precursor to the web. Groupon argued that some of IBM's patents should not have been granted because they described obvious ideas and said the computing company's damages request was unreasonable. This week sees Telstra's head of technology out in a company restructure. Telstra's head of technology Stephen Elop has been pushed out of a major executive reshuffle that forms part of the Telco's 2022 strategy. Stephen Elop was a former Nokia and Microsoft executive and he had been in the role for a little bit over two years. He had been in charge of business groups including the Chief Technology Office, Chief Scientist Software Group and corporate strategy. In a statement, Telstra said that Elop had been instrumental in building the company's technology credentials, including bringing the CTO and corporate strategy functions together. 
I'm Brad Nelson. I hope you enjoyed watching this week's news. Remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and with your colleagues. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and you can check out the latest shows with David Limpicum and the podcast in the description box below. Until next week, be good, be safe and keep our clouds secure.